in what what is your writing process from from start to finish? I come up with a basic premise of the whole novel, so I know what the beginning is. I usually have an opening scene in my mind. I usually have a premise, like I know this is going to be a novel about you know, like for Shadow Secret of the Shadow Beast, I knew it would be a, a novel about the Umbrai, and then I often sometimes I start with a character first. It, it usually they usually come hand in hand. I have a character and I have a world enter my mind at the same time. And that's happened. Nora Kemp was a character who had been in a different story, actually, that I'd been mulling over how to, um, how to make that a, a better story. And I just, when I, for some reason, when I realized that Secret of the Shadow Beasts would be, would, would come, that the, that the monsters would come from environmental degradation, even though that had nothing to do with Nora Kemp's story in the other, other version, I suddenly thought she's the perfect kid to be in this one with that as the backdrop. And suddenly it all, I mean, the characters um, in her order, um, the other kids just came. They just came to my mind somehow, somehow they just came. And, oh gosh, I think I'm going off on a tangent from your question. <laughs> I think the question was a tangent to begin with, so we're fine. <laughs> we're lost in the woods together. We'll, oh, we'll find our way out. But no, I, 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 oh, no, I writing process. That's yes, it. You sketch uh, ideas first, and then you figure out the storyline, and then you write the first draft. Is that every time? Yes, yes. So I come up, I come up with my basic plot. Um, I come up with really basic plot. So beginning, middle, and end. I know what my opening scene is going to be. I know more or less what's going to happen in the middle because middles are often baggy and hard to write. So I think about some kind of mini climax or discovery that's going to happen in the middle. And then the end has to be this big, exciting. I know, and sometimes the end changes often, actually, very often the end changes completely from what I in originally envisioned, but it's, some of the elements are the same. So I'm going toward what happens often when I'm writing is that I I have my characters and they're you know they're chugging along and they're doing their thing and it's just wonderful and I'm discovering things about them and about the story as I'm writing and I'm midway through and I think actually with all the all that I know now that ending doesn't make sense this ending does so I'll rewrite the ending in my mind or at least the skeleton of the ending while I'm writing but I come up with my characters I do a quick a quick character sketch, I sometimes write actually pages in my notebook of who they are and what their backgrounds were to understand their psychology, um, write down elements, key elements of their appearance so I don't forget to be consistent. And um, I always write down the, at the very least, uh, names of my cast and who they are and a couple of details, usually personality-based. And then, and then I just write, yeah, my, my rough draft. And then I just let it let it all out there and fix it in revisions. Do you find I find that even if the ending changes, having an ending in mind at least gives you a goal to strive toward, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. But I find I can't um, I can't force it to the end. Sometimes I sometimes I have, and you know you can tell when when you've made the ending happen and it doesn't want to happen. <laughs> the characters actually don't want to go there. Well, if the ending is exactly what you planned, did you really go on a journey? Yeah, did you really learn anything? I mean, that's the thing, writing a novel, you probably, I'm sure you feel this way too. It's, you, it's, a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful discovery. I do. Yeah, it is. It is a wonderful discovery. And sometimes it's painful because it's not happening fast enough. And I was over a deadline by a week ago when I'm still working. But... <laughs> oh gosh, deadlines. <laughs> That's why I write. I was telling you just before we talked that I write in the morning and in the evening, my day job in the middle. Um, that's why I have those two writing periods so that even if the first one doesn't go well, I have my second one. If the first one goes well, great. Then I have a chance to do even more in the evening. But I've trained myself to just be able to sit down and if I, if I have a novel, it's the, it's the, um, the pre-writing stage when I'm just imagining a new work. That's the harder part. That's when I need to spend a lot of time daydreaming and just um, sketching out ideas and trying things back and forth. But once I'm in my first draft, I can just sit down and go. I've somehow trained myself to let my mind open and just do it. And then I often go back and rewrite. But it's funny, there's a, there's a scene in um, 
the Madwell's daughter, near the end, I won't describe it because I'll probably give away a lot of plots, but I remember writing it one morning when I was so tired, I hadn't had enough sleep and I just wrote it and I thought, oh, this is, this is terrible, but I'll be able to rewrite it. I barely changed that scene. I think I've cut, I think my editor asked me to change like one sentence in it. That scene is almost exactly the way it was when I wrote it because somehow even in my <laughs> half awake state, I was able to get to the point of what was happening. I think it's when you know your characters that well, you know, they're just, they're telling the story. Yeah, hopefully if you're doing it right, you get to a point where the characters are doing more work than you, at least as much work as you are, maybe not more. <laughs> Do you, um, with your, the structure of your, what, what, what does that first session look like? Do you have a, a specific start time and a, and a specific goal you need to cover during that time? I, I don't give myself word count goals um, just because I find that I find that I either struggle and I don't come close and then it's just frustrating. Some, I, I just, I try to, I try to be gentle with myself, especially when I'm beginning a novel. And if I'm struggling with the beginning, I grab a, I grab one of the books I have beside me. I grab a, a mentor text as what kids and kids call them in school. And I just will open it and jump in and read something and just, just to remember how this is done, you know, and that this can be wonderful. Um, where is it? Yeah. Philip Reeves, Here Lies Arthur. My goodness, this was my mentor text for The Madwell's Daughter so often. This is a brilliant story, historical novel of what the real King Arthur might have been like. And um, the research is incredible. The writing is stunning. Uh, just the writing is beautiful. The action is intense, thoughtful. There's so much heart. That's just a perfect, perfect novel. And so I would jump into that one often when I was hitting a difficult point with the Mad Wolf's daughter. Just when I was having trouble getting started, I just jump in and, and read something. So that that helped. But I don't I don't give myself a word limit because I either struggle or I vastly <laughs> write way more than um than what I need because I am I'm a fast writer and if it's going well if I say okay in this hour um I'll write you know aim for a thousand words I might write 1500 just they might all come out or I might write 200 because it was hard and at least I'll say if I've got something down or if I know where I'll where I'm going for my next one um my next writing session then I'm then it's a successful day as long as I have something done for those two sessions, then I then I feel okay. So for um, starting time, the summer is great. My son doesn't have school. I work from home these days. My day job um, lets me do that, so I can sleep as much as I need to, um, as long as I start my day at nine o'clock and have my writing time, you know, before. So I usually get up, you know, between five and six, and I just grab my cup of tea and I sit down and write for the first hour or two of the morning going to hastily get ready. On school days, it's a little bit different. <laughs> well, just you and me, nobody, nobody from your uh, employment listing. If you had a great idea or something was going really well during the day, would you ever maybe eh, take a moment off from the day job, finish this, but then give more to the day job later, of course? I have done that. I have worked later if I've needed to. My lunch break, my lunch, uh, even when I worked in my office pre-pandemic, um, I'd bring my notebook and I'd sketch things. Actually, it was, uh, it was really helpful when I was driving to my office. I'd had a, about a 35, 40 minute commute and I would have my phone on record on voice memo and I would brainstorm as I drove in every day. And that really helped me with um, the Mad Wolf's Daughter and the Hunt for the Mad Wolf's Daughter. A little bit for Secret of the Shadow Beasts, but of course, pandemic began. So we were all home <laughs> during most of, most of that, all my revisions. But yeah, having having a, a commute, I've I've learned I've learned to go without um, that, those brainstorming sessions, which is which is odd. I might need to just go back to that somehow. Well, you just go for a drive, I suppose. Yeah. No yeah. specified uh, arrival. Yeah. Um, I'm curious if uh, this is a trap I might fall into, and uh, I assume you're stronger than me, but but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> When you have a really great first session, 
And then the second session comes around. Yeah, that first session was really great. Maybe we see what's on Netflix. Is that a? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, no. When I get when I get into it, I am I get I get snared and sucked into the story. If it's going well, it just draws me in, and I want to see what happens next. You know, it's if I'm writing if I'm writing a good story, I'm interested in it, so I want to see what these characters do. So that seven days a week, 365 days a year? Or? Pretty much. I mean, I take I take breaks between ideas. It's, How long a uh, break are we talking? Oh yeah. I mean, I need I need to because if you if you're on just finished one novel to start another one the next, you know, the next day or even the same day um would be would be hard. So that's when I <laughs> that's when I turn on Netflix and that's when I read a lot. I tend to I tend to just swallow middle grade books. I read my market. I read, read a lot of my market and I just will read three or four books at a time and just get myself away from what I just wrote to try to prepare for the new one. And sometimes it takes me longer because between novels, I need to, um, I need to come up with the idea. And then that's, that just requires that careful, um, that, that careful, quiet, peaceful, fruitful brainstorming session where you you want to come up with a really good idea you want everything to click and it sometimes takes a while for that to happen would it be great if you could just snap your fingers say great idea now yeah yeah well sometimes i have great ideas and i think this this is marketable this is perfect and i just i don't know who the characters are or i i can write who the characters are but i don't know them you know i don't know them enough to write them in a work of fiction. Sometimes I try, sometimes I force myself. I have a book that I hope is going to be, I have a novel that I hope is going to be my next book where I did force myself to just sit down and write it because I loved the idea so much. I could even picture the cover in my mind. I know even who the cover artist, I know who I want as a cover artist. I mean, I'm that far into it. And so I just, um, I just kept that in my mind um, as I wrote. And then when I finished, I shared just a bit with my agent who said, you know, this is, this is a little, little, uh, your, your protagonist is a little hard to connect with. And I thought it's because he's not entirely real. <laughs> Good for you for noticing that. Everything else is exciting and wonderful, but um, yeah, he's the problem. So we talked a little bit about ways I could flesh him out. And I said, actually, this other character who's been creeping in the back of my mind he's the protagonist of the story so switch and um i rewrote the whole book with um this other protagonist's character in mind and suddenly it clicked then but i needed to get that bare bones out before